I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and I got the gold standard for an enjoyable deck. Just for you. Okay, let's get some things down before the video starts. I started playing this game like a month ago. I'm working with what I got and I still don't exactly know everything. To be honest with you, I don't even know what a card is, let alone a game. And last but not least, I love that bitch! When I first started out, I was given nothing. I was told to build structure decks, which kind of suck. Like, what do you mean I don't summon three monsters in one turn? Bricks of worthlessness, if you ask me. While my friends built basically meta hero decks where they summon God. And I was told to screw off, find a deck that I like, in a seemingly endless sea of cards. So I had to work with what I knew. Pot of Greed, Exodia, The Forbidden One, and Zombies. And that's when I found him, my beloved, my big golden king and his kingdom. And he is awesome. What about that yummy lore? Hmm? How about, uh, how about that lore that uh, I talk about so much so often and other stuff? Uh, I don't know. I tried looking for lore everywhere, but I got nothing concrete. This led me to looking at card art from the bottom of a dark barrel with a faulty flashlight. My best guess is that some wacky alchemy happened and it turned everything into gold, including the Lord of the Land who was known for their avarice. It's also supposed to kind of allude to the Native American city El Dorado that was supposedly made out of gold. Enough about South American mythical cities though. Let's break down the cards in these decks so we can use them correctly, huh? First of all, we're going to talk about our Keystone card, which is Eldritch the Golden Lord, also known as Barney if Moe's Tavern was the playfield. That's because, by not only having a good stat line, he mulligan spells and traps to get on the field to coming back from the graveyard. I'm also a big fan of his in-hand activation, where you get rid of one of your cards in your hand to send Eldritch to the graveyard, while sending another card to the graveyard of your choosing, of what's on the field. It's nice and silly, especially when you get rid of any large high stat cards that your enemy spent all their turn cooking up. Don't worry, he gets even better though. If Eldritch is sent to the graveyard, he can come back by taking the spell trap from the field, summoning him once per turn. Making it so the first turn he comes back, he gains 1,000 points in each stat for two turns. Most of the cards in the deck are curated to make it so Eldritch permeates your very life. I played so much of this deck that I'm pretty sure at this point that if I got sent to the graveyard, I would somehow help summon him. The Rock, or the Lord of Heavenly Prison, is a giant dragon with a large pool of defense and attack. There's a catch though, you don't really want to summon him unless you're cooking and have two cards of tribute that you want to tribute. Otherwise you can just special summon him by showing rock. If your enemy is stupid and dumb and an idiot and uses a spell or a trap that's already set up, you can summon him for absolutely free. And then even set down a spell or trap card of your own. This effect can only happen once per turn, but it can turn the tide of the entire game. Being able to set down traps or spells and being a large better fielded card than Eldlich. He does great, but he doesn't do as good as Eldlich at his highest. Rock on, big guy. Necro World Banshee is used for two things, getting Zombie World on the field so it can mess up most XYZ summons and making it harder for some cards who need certain keywords in the graveyard to work. You can use Necro World Banshee and banish it to get Walkie World. And besides the fact that it makes it a bit hard to get rid of Zombie World, that's it. Besides that, their stat line is alright for a card you aren't going to use much. It works okay if you want to fill out your field and maybe get a last hit in. Besides that, just keep on trying to get Zombieland. The cool classic movie about found family featuring Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson. On Blu-ray or on digital release. Blow Up Bloom is the working man's Eldritch Summon. That works amazingly with Zombie World and the deck as a whole, allowing for a faster rollout of initial Eldliches or Eldli as I like to call them. Glow Up Bloom is little but mighty, being a card with no stats that can be hidden while being set. If the Glow Up Bloom is sent to the graveyard for any reason, it can be activated to summon a 1 level 5 or higher zombie monster. And if Zombie World is active on the field, one of the Glow Up Blooms can be special summoned from the deck per turn. With the added effect that you can only summon zombies per turn, but like only one card in this isn't a zombie, so it's okay. So make sure to get Rock out before you get Glow Bloom up. I wonder what it smells like. Getting to spells, we have Harpy's Feather Duster, which I quote, destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. So yeah, use this if you want to destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. Yeah, what a simple and great card. Reasoning is great for getting the cards you want into the graveyard, dumping them like Ron Swanson throws his computer into a dumpster. When played, your enemy declares a monster 1 through 12 and gets your decks excavated through one by one, with each of them being put into the graveyard until a monster that can be summoned or set is found. If your enemy gets the monster level wrong, you get to summon that card for free. If they do, you at least get to keep the card though. 
This works awesome for the cards that can be activated in the graveyard, and if you want to pull a monster. If you have this card pulled on you, go make yourself a copy, mow the lawn, call your mom, and then maybe sit down, because they might be halfway done with their turn. Terraform is used to summon Zombie World. Yeah, that, that's it. Shout out to Terraform, one of my favorite genders. Zombie World makes it so you can mess up most XYZ summons and making it harder for some cards who need certain keywords to work in the graveyard because of the change of their monster typing. This card is made for shenanigans, blatant and mischievous shenanigans, creating another roadblock, making it difficult for your opponent to make a good defense. Curse Zelda makes it easier for you to pull Eldritch and Golden Land spells for 800 life points directly from your deck into your hand. If this spell is cast into the Shadow Realm of the Graveyard, you can use it for free instead. Just once, though. This is a great card to tribute to resummon old Eldie Boy, and is an even greater card to get everything you need out and to your hand. Eldlixir of Black Awakening, White Destiny, and Scarlet Sanguine cover the same niche of pulling even more Eldlich and Golden Land cards from your deck. With Eldlich coming first if you don't already have him on the field, with everything else coming after. The main difference being that the Eldlixir of Black Awakening and White Destiny instantly summon something in the defense position from the hand or deck for Black Awakening and the Graveyard or Hand for White Destiny. While you can choose from the deck or graveyard from the Scarlet Sanguine, allowing you to summon in any position you want. But it's a trap card, so you gotta wait a turn anyways. You can also activate them from the graveyard for another activation of that exact effect. For the Eldritch decks, these elixirs are the ambrosia that you slurp from to help fuel your deck, making Eldritch so omnipresent in your deck while bringing in trap cards. Skill Drain lets you get rid of any pesky effects for all space-up monster cards for the cost of 100 life points, making it so you can cancel some spells like how people try to cancel the new Hogwarts game. There can only be one and goes and match practically do the same thing, where you and your enemy can only control one of each type of monster or one attribute of monster. The type listing is right under the card art while the attribute is in the top right corner. I'm only saying this because it took me like a week to figure that out. These are good at getting rid of specialized decks and making comebacks with the cards you have. Wiping all but one monster for each player if used correctly. The final cards in the deck are all varying stat golden land trap cards that summon a monster when activated. All become increasingly more important when Eldlich is on the field and the trap is activated, gaining a secondary activation, which does things like turn one card attack to zero for the guardian, making them easier to attack and maybe even pierce through an attack phase. <laughs> What? Quiero? Banishes one card from the graveyard, making it so they can't be used again. Well, the Conquistador just straight up destroys one card from the field, sending it to the graveyard. Each one of these monsters, when sent to the graveyard, can be banished from the graveyard and summon an elixir trap or spell in their place, allowing for you to place another rotation of spells and traps. Make it very important to do while you fight people. If you play it right, you'll be placing down cards for like a minute straight. And besides that already pretty good groundwork, there are even more cards in the extra deck. These monsters are usually combinations of multiple monsters that have been summoned to cover niches or cover certain winning strategies. Many of these monsters have their own special effects with them working well in the deck due to attributed monsters being sent to the graveyard, making it so Eldritch can be resummoned after being used to make a monster. This can really catch people by surprise and make them really rethink their entire life choices. Soy Pallades allows you to use a monster that was a material for a fusion, making it so you can send a monster from the field to the deck. This is great if you want to get rid of anything before an attack phase starts, making it so you can get rid of a monster for a short amount of time, sending its back to its mama crying. Number 61 Volcanus can do the same thing but only four monsters. When a monster is destroyed by the attack of this monster, it hurts the enemy player's life points as well. They haven't been able to do it, but I would love to BM somebody with this and destroy them with their own card. What an idiot they'll look like for just trying to play the game. Crimson Knight Vampire Braum uses a material to special summon monsters from the enemy's graveyard to fight for the rest of your turn. Overwhelm them with this summon. And go wild for the next turn, but not after though, because they're going to get sent back to the graveyard. This along with his zero defense stat makes it so Braum is a more attack-oriented card allowing for one final push before you're kind of bricked. Zombie Vampire is all about getting cards into your hand onto the field with special summons. Super Rail Can and Gustav Max is used to punch through and deliver a finishing blow to an enemy. And if that doesn't work, you can just use the Juggernaut variant, who both gain 2,000 attack and defense by using material, with only one material being allowed to be used each turn. Zeus Board Wipes if they use two materials and is a well-rounded card. 
I would also kick, cry, and scream if I got bored wiped by this thing. Here, Gardner makes it so effects are nullified when he's summoned and uses materials to not take damage for one battle. Blade Charmer straight up targets a light monster in the enemy's graveyard and summons it with 150 defense or less once per turn. Nightmare Unicorn adds one card after mulliganing a card and destroying a targeted card. Vampire Fascinator can summon one enemy monster to fight for you from their graveyard in defense position. You can also tribute a Vampire Monster card to control an enemy monster for one turn. I love this card. It destroyed a guy that only had one card left on the field. It felt so good. Despite how amazing, awesome, swaggy, and rock solid this deck is, there are some issues that you might run into. Because nothing is perfect. Unless you subscribe to me, then you might be. This deck uses a main three big cards, with everything else supporting or being supported around those cards. Fortunately, they can come back, but if they're banished, they can no longer be used and it shuts down the deck horribly. Monsters that do this use skill drain and for spells and traps, try to use Harpy's Feather Duster, making it so you destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. Finishing decks are few and far between, but they can shut you down if you don't have these in your deck. Something that also irreparably destroys this deck, ruining the rhythm and stopping the flow as hard as playing Doom Eternal and moving over to Civ 6, is when you are shut down and can't summon anything. This happens because of spells or traps being negated. You can't stew, boil, or cook on your turns. And you have to try your best to fight back. Usually these games end fastly though, allowing you to try again. Some decks just straight up counter others. Sometimes you gotta take the L and that's okay. But you always can try using your special deck to adapt to these situations. And that's it for my Eldritch deck. What is your favorite deck in Yu-Gi-Oh? Do you have any cards or recommendations or revisions you want me to try? Make sure to tell me in the comments down below. If this video pops off and gets enough people asking for it, I might do a stream of me using this deck in Master Duel. So I really hope it does. It was really fun going into Yu-Gi-Oh for the first time. Till next video, fellas!